Hey guys, today I'm gonna share the entire process of how I've made this robot. My goal was to make a larger version of my previous robot, which I have made a few months ago. The main idea was to convert this prototype to a workable scale model that can actually carry some payload with its arm and can maneuver through rough terrains in real life. The design covers two categories mainly, chassis design and the arm design. I have designed all of the structural components and the chassis of this vehicle using SOLIDWORKS. For the chassis, I have used a rectangular base profile rather than using square so that the width is more than the length. This reduces the sideways sliding of the wheels while turning. I used mainly two types of fabrication processes for this project. They are laser cutting and 3D printing. I used laser cutting to fabricate the metal parts like the chassis and the arm links. 4mm aluminium was used as the main material to achieve a lightweight structure. However, it was very tough to laser cut aluminium, let alone 4mm thick aluminium. I 3D printed the base of the arm and for now, I only used the pitching motion and skipped the rolling motion of the base for structural rigidity. End defector was entirely 3D printed, maintaining the optimum strength to successfully grip and hold the design payload. I tried to reduce the dead load of the gripper as much as possible since it will affect the torque supporting capability of the shoulder and the elbow joint. 20 kg servos were used to enable the pitching, rolling and gripping motions of the manipulator independent of each other. For the fingers gear mesh, a 1.5 is to 1 gear reduction was used to increase the gripping moment. The 3 servo design made the end defector very clean and compact. It, it also reduced the dead load at very end of the arm. By adding the shaft which allows the gripper to roll, my gripper assembly is om almost complete. Here's how the fingers gear mesh is working. After the finger assembly is done, now it's time for the wrist assembly. The wrist is box shaped with a servo inside it, which actually gives the rolling motion to the gripper.
I printed some structural supports to connect the two aluminium sheets together at each link and try to make a single rigid body for the links. This completely eliminated the flexing or twisting motion of the two links which was otherwise a huge problem since they are very long and made out of sheet metal instead of hollow metal tube. I also printed four cylindrical supports for the 5mm shaft used on the actuator to link connection points which eliminated the bending of these 5mm shafts under load. By the way, I didn't have to use any of the supports if I used pipes instead of sheets. But everything comes at a cost. Pipes are very difficult to handle and also it is tough to drill or make profiles on a pipe. From my perspective, pipes were not just meeting my design expectations for this particular arm. I attached all the motors to the mounts and fitted the mounts to the body. I have used four 400 high torque geared motors with 130mm diameter wheels I installed those big wheels on. Then I attached the arm to the body. This almost completed the physical part of the project. For the electronics and control, I used two 24V 12A dual channel DC motor driver modules, one for driving the four wheels, other for driving the two DC actuators. Arduino Mega was used as the microcontroller. 10 channel flysky transmitter and receiver were used to establish wireless communication. I used a 16 channel servo motor driver to drive the servos with 7 volt supply. Now for the performance test. For the shoulder and elbow joints, I used two actuators in triangular geometry with the links, which produced a great amount of torque output way beyond my expectations. Here I need to mention one thing that although I wanted to use actuators when encoders initially to sense the shoulder and elbow joint angles, I couldn't use them since they came out very very expensive. So I used two normal 100mm stroke actuators without any feedback system. This became the only obstacle for me to implement inverse kinematics. So among the five joints, three were servos that are capable to achieve the desired angle on their own and the rest was just actuators with no sensors at all. It's like you are driving blindfolded so you can't actually sense the environment and take corrective measures to follow the road. Now back to the flow. I didn't use any bearings for the shoulder and elbow joints since the rotation was very small to produce a fictional loss. For the electronics and control, I used two 24V 12A dual channel DC motor driver modules, one for driving the four wheels, other for driving the two DC actuators. As you can see here I have used two types of motor driver initially. One is 12A 
24 volt dual channel motor driver and another one is Sabertooth. But thinking about the price of the Sabertooth as it's too expensive, I replaced it. Arduino Mega was used as the microcontroller. 10 channel FlySky transmitter and receiver were used to establish wireless communication. I used a 16 channel servo motor driver to drive the servos with 7 volt supply. I soldered jumpers with electrical wires to establish connection between the manipulator and the microcontroller. I used heat sinks to properly isolate the wires. I made 4 long wires with jumpers on the both end of the wires. I completed all the necessary connections to control the manipulator. Then I drilled some holes on the 3D printed support in order to tie up the messed up wires of the servo of the manipulator. I finally used my multimeter to check if there is any short circuit or any leakage of the wires and also checked all the voltage levels like for the chassis I used 12 volts, for the actuators I also used 12 volts and for the three servos at the gripper I used 7 volts uh, since most of them has a maximum voltage rating of 8.4 volts.